welcome back to Joe and Di's allotment uh, channel. I'm Joe and Di, as always, is behind the camera. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we haven't been down the allotment a lot recently, and you'll, as you'll see later, it's in a bit of a weedy mess, really. I mean, we've, we've cleared quite a bit today, um, but we're going to, um, over the next few weeks, we'll try and clear it. We've got the all, all winter to clear it, really, because there won't be a lot of sowing from now on. So we've got the whole of the winter to get it ready for spring. Um, for various reasons, we've just not been able to get down there. Um, yeah, so what I'll do today is I'll give you a quick sort of plot tour of the two plots when we get over there later on, and a little quick sh sh shifty around the garden to show you what's happening here. Um, yeah, so we've still got a few things we can sow. We've still got broad beans, which I'm going to put in um, later down the allotment. Sow those and garlic. Um, they're the only two things I'll be sowing in the whole of November, really. Um, but we've got some pruning to do. I mean, the apples, the cherry tree, plum trees, they can all be pruned this time of year. Raspberry cranes can be cut down. Um, black berry, black currant, black currant. Black currant bushes can be sort of trimmed if there's any overcrowded or dead wood, they can be taken out. And it's also a good time of year to actually spray um, your trees after you sort of um, pruned them. Uh, to stop any sort of infections for next year really. I normally spray them twice a year and we normally make up our own sort of a mixture. Um, done a video on that previously. It's basically made with hot chilies, cinnamon and garlic and vegetable oil. Um, what I do is I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in making some of your own. Um, we've actually got these hot chilies still growing in the greenhouse. I'm going to use those, I think, to make some more because these are really, really hot chilies. As you can see, the greenhouse has still got stuff growing in it. Um, parsley's doing really well. We've got some lettuces in here. We've got the parsley growing. Um, lettuces and rocket. Um, got some more lettuces on this side. And some winter onions as well that are coming through. These peppers, which I kept sort of dug out the greenhouse and kept, they're still producing. I, I picked a few peppers off them the other day. Um, it's going to start turning chilli towards the end this week, so I might move them into the conservatory at the end of this week and see if I can keep them going through the winter. But yeah, I picked a few um, small bell peppers off of this one the other day as well, and there's, there's still another couple developing, so, and they're still flowering, so I think we'll still get a few more off of that, which is excellent. Um, yeah, so we're, we're munching our way through this green stuff, the parsley, the lettuces, the rocket so it keeps us going for fresh green stuff all the way through the winter and same with the other greenhouse down the allotment i think we've got on growing in there we've got rocket um put, put some garlic in there early which is just starting to come through but we'll show you all that later um yeah we've still got lots of fresh stuff as well we're still we're still eating red tomatoes in the middle of november we've still still got quite a few tomatoes some are starting to get a bit wrinkly now so we're using those for cooking we've still got some firm ones which we're still eating fresh. Um, still got onions in storage and shallots in storage, loads and loads of marrows um, and butternut squashes. Um, I might actually do a video on butternut squash soup, which is really lovely. And we also make the courgettes, well not courgettes anymore, they're marrows now, they're so big, but we use them to make uh, balls, like courgette balls, which are lovely in, with pasta or even on their own, they're quite a nice little snack. So I might uh, do a video on that as well at some stage show you what, how we sort of utilize those crops. Um, we've still got apples, which we picked, um, we harvested. So we've still got a box of apples in the in, in the shed in storage. So we use those to make some apple sauce as we go along uh, for the next few months, hopefully they'll last. I'm picking out the sort of moldy ones as we go go along. Um, where else have we still got fresh? Uh, we, we've still got stuff uh, down the line we can actually harvest. We've got Carrots and beetroot and Jerusalem artichokes down there. Beetroot. Did I say beetroot? Yeah. <laughs> beetroot, I said already. Yeah, we've still got quite a, I'll show you later. We've still got lots of stuff down there that we can harvest. Parsnips and other stuff. Cow. Um, so I'll show you all that a bit later when we pop down the allotment. But yeah, so that's just a quick summary of what you to expect in the video. Um, and we'll carry on. So we've still got a lot of perpetual spinach in the garden which is quite nice to be able to pick, come out and pick fresh and use straight away. So what we do is we collect the leaves up. We've got a big sycamore tree at the back of the garden and the apple trees as well. 
So we um, make a cage up and collect all the leaves up, which I suppose has got two benefits really. It feeds the soil and it also rots right down and we bag it up and use it as mulch or compost, compost activator in the spring. Um, still got a big bunch of parsley over there growing still as well actually. It's quite a nice big bunch of parsley growing there. So yeah, we've, got, we've, we've, we've filled this up quite a lot, a couple of times already. So it goes down and we've put some more on top. So we'll keep on doing that. As you can see, the garden's got loads and loads of leaves in it yet. And the sycamore tree still got lots of leaves on it to fall off yet. So it's um, it's a pain in the bum, but it's also good good, good that we're able to collect the leaves. So we're down then on plot 59? Yeah. Yeah. So we've um, cleared a couple of beds today. Um, we're going to plant broad beans in these beds. Um, we're using this bed as a compost bin at the moment. So we're just piling everything up there, let it rot down over the winter. Um, still got a few parsnips in that bed over there. And we've got a few bits in here still. We've got some rocket, uh, row of carrots, and some late beetroot there. Got some winter onions growing here, and we've got this area available for raw beans as well. This one is a mess and needs to be cleared. Walks and all basically, as we said, we haven't been down here for a while, so the weeds have taken over. But a lot of it's actually rocket. We've got rocket and we've got ondive at the other end, which is coming through on its own. There's quite a lot of bits of rocket in here, and sort of ondive's coming up as well. So even when you leave a plot un untended, you, you get stuff growing. This bed's still got quite a lot of stuff in it. We've got uh, flat leaf parsley and coriander. We've got some rocket, some winter radishes, some mustard, um, some spinach. So that's, that's something to crop for the next few months as well. We've still got quite a few red cabbages here. They don't look very good, but actually, when I mean, you take out the outer leaves, and they're still very good. So we're um, munching our way through those. So we picked the last of the beans this morning as well. So we take those out and, and we'll shell those. And we'll use those in um, uh, either casseroles or stews. They're still quite good. Or sometimes we make bean burgers with them as well. Um, it's looking quite good in here. Got some rocket down that end. We've got some... Um, Winter onions here, still got a couple of chilli plants growing and it's still got red chillies on them, so they're doing pretty good. Um, we've got some endive growing at that end, some more spinach and lettuce, some endive, and this patch has got garlic in it, and some of it's just starting to come up now, so it's just starting to germinate. The artichokes are looking very, very healthy, they've got a lot to grow, so we should get a good crop of those for next, next year. Um, that bed's a bit of a hodgepodge. We've got some parsley, some perpetual spinach, some carrots, and some odds and sods in there as well still. We're munching our way through this section of carrots at the moment. We'll take some up before we go home today, but they're, they're looking quite good actually. Yeah. We'll dig some of those up later. And then we've got some cow. Some more parsley, some lettuces. We've got some cauliflowers come through. Actually pulled up, uh, harvested a couple of heads last, last week as well. So we've had a couple of good ones. Um, got spring cabbages here. So we're still munching our way through the beetroot section here. There's still quite a few there. We've got some more rocket and winter radish and perpetual spinach there as well. So quite a lot of stuff still that's edible really, which is quite good for this time of year. These are our celery plants. Look, we're taking stalks off them as we go along. Not too bad. We've got parsnip, a row of parsnip there. So we've got some more winter radish here and we've got a Nice giant leaf mustard there. It's lovely. Still so got lots of cow in here, which we're um, munching our way through as well.
So these are our own uh, saved broad beans from last year, last autumn sowing. So we tend to plant the majority of our broad beans this time of year in the autumn, because um, we find that they produce a better crop. Um, they're not so affected by the black fly. And we sort of harvest them in about 26 weeks. So they should be ready sort of in May. Um, I've actually done a video earlier in the year about how we um, save our own seeds. So I'll put a link to that in the uh, description as well, if you're interested in saving your own broad bean seeds. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're very hardy plants. So they, they go all the way all through the winter. Um, the only thing you have to worry about is if, if you haven't got free draining soil and your soil puddles a lot, you can get sort of root rot and it kills the plants. But um, we drain quite well here, so we don't tend to have that problem. Um, I normally plant them very close as well, so sort of uh, eight inches apart, eight to nine inches apart. So when they grow, they produce their own sort of canopy, which keeps the weeds down, and we get a nice uh, bumper crop as well because we plant them nice and close together, so we get more plants in the area we plant them in. So what, my, what I do is I usually use my thumb and push them with my thumb to the, to the depth of my thumb basically, um, cover them over. And what I do is also, once I've planted as many spaces as we've got available, um, I'll put some in uh, toilet rolls in the greenhouse at home as well. So if there's any spaces that occur, I can fill them up with uh, ones that are germinated at home. So it's just basically a matter of pushing them in to thumb depth. And they should sort of germinate in sort of seven to 12 days. And as I said earlier, they should give us a crop around sort of May, about 26 weeks time. They take longer than the spring sown ones, which uh, produce a crop earlier. But as I said, they're hardy and they're less prone to black fly. So it's a good way of growing them. Good time to grow them. And the only other thing that I'll, I'll be planting this time during this period would be garlic but what I might do I might start those off at home as well in um, toilet rolls in the greenhouse get them started then I'll plant them out later on in the year maybe December they say you should plant them out on the shortest day and harvest them on the longest day so um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll pre-germinate them first at home in toilet rolls before I put them into the pot we've got a few growing in uh, in the greenhouse there already um, and we've still got quite a good stock of green garlic dried green garlic we've got preserved garlic and we've still got a good stock of garlic as well not bad Should keep us going for a few days. Take that in the home, give a good wash. So we're on, we're on plot 52 now. Um, there's quite a lot of concrete there I can still chop down. I think I'll probably put that into a bean trench. Um, we planted four rows of strawberries, new strawberries. Um, we're moving the plot from that end to this end. As you can see, it needs weeding. There's potatoes coming up, there's mustard coming up, but uh, the potatoes, the um, Strawberries are okay. We've got new growth on them, so they're doing okay. Yeah, they're growing. They look like they've established themselves. We just need to weed them now. So we'll do that over the next couple of uh, weeks. So the Jerusalem artichokes are ready for cropping as well now. Um, them out the ground. You can see there's quite a lot on there. So yeah, when I mean, we dry these. Um, which makes a nice thickening agent. We also like to put them in sort of soups and they're quite nice roasted as well. They make a nice soup. So yeah, take these home and give them a good wash as well. In fact the whole plot needs uh, a good weeding. I can't believe that was, that was clear three or four weeks ago. 
needs redoing again now so I'll dig it all over again um, but yeah we've still got stuff growing we've still got a nice big section of leeks up there yeah we've got a nice nice lot of leeks which we can have uh, lots of leek and potato soup with our stored potatoes and we've still got uh, undercover there quite a lot of cow there as well so we'll um, work our way through that through the winter yeah we've dried a lot of cow as well so we've got fresh cow also got dry cow um, as well can't believe this look still producing beans in mid-november there's still flowers on it that's how mild it's been i think amazing that's the old strawberry bed over there we were going to sort of completely uh, kill it dig them all out we thought we'd give them another year to sort of produce a few more strawberries so we've got the new ones up that end and some of the old ones here but we will clear this up after the next sort of uh, crop i think we'll clear it completely um yeah so so basically we've got the trees we need to trim as well as i said earlier in the video we'll um trim the trees the cherry the plums and the apple trees they still leaves are still haven't fallen off though a lot of them oh look we've got an apple still got an apple in there oh two apples oh look, quite a nice little apple well, that one's a uh, bird's had a nice munch out of that one already so we'll leave that one down there for the birds to finish off and we'll take this one home there so yeah we need to trim those up um and it's just basically a trim trim everything and give them a good spray with our homemade insecticide and basically get the plot ready for next spring now really um other than put some more garlic in and sow the rest of the raw beans that's the only sowing for this time of year but as, as we said earlier we've still got lots of food that we've grown throughout the year which we can use throughout the winter um so we hopefully i mean our, our aim is always to try and have something that we've grown every day of the year so we've still got quite a lot of stuff that we can carry on using um, which will hopefully take us through to spring especially with salad stuff we, we hopefully got salad stuff all the way through 12 month period which is excellent um, yeah hope you've enjoyed the video um, if you'd like to give us a like or if you'd like to subscribe and follow our journey into throughout the winter and into next year please subscribe um, we will try and do some recipes as well in the next few weeks uh, definitely um, butternut squash soup and courgette balls which, which are two things we need to do because we've got lots of um, marrows and we've got lots of butternut squashes available at the moment yeah so thanks for watching come back and visit us again soon take care happy gardening